lift your weights, you get sore, you eat your protein, and you repeat. Four times a week, five times a week. Myofibrillar hypertrophy is what you may recognize as protein synthesis. Protein synthesis requires a protein-rich diet. The protein you consume breaks down into amino acids, which the muscles then use to synthesize the muscle-specific proteins to grow the myofibrils. This type of training is mostly influenced by muscle tension. In this video, we want to give you some advice, something to really think about when it comes to bodybuilding and muscle growth. Ready? Let's go. The question of protein consumption for muscle growth comes down to protein synthesis, which is another name for myofibrillar hypertrophy. Muscles are made up largely out of proteins, and many novice bodybuilders are terrified to lose muscle or to not gain muscle, and they quantify that in many different ways. So you'll hear stuff like one gram of protein per one pound of body weight, or confusion about when to have protein, is it before the workout or after the workout, or both, or maybe every three hours. And we even heard stuff like waking up in the middle of the night to eat chicken breast and have a protein shake. We really have heard it all. It's like a compulsive obsession with protein intake without fully understanding how the body utilizes that protein. We might even do a series one day called The Changing Room Diaries, where we cover bad habits and techniques we hear constantly in gym changing rooms. We want to give you two important pieces of advice to think about and some ideas to work with. The first is that the protein you consume in your diet doesn't just magically convert into muscle protein to maintain or grow new muscle tissue. You've heard the term protein synthesis, right? This is where the body takes amino acids to synthesize the protein it needs. And there are many, 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 many proteins the body can synthesize. Most people damage their muscles and then eat a lot of protein throughout the day. A small amount of this protein breaks down into amino acids and gets into the muscle to repair the damage and build it stronger. The majority of that protein, however, does go to waste. The second piece of advice is we need to get those amino acids into the muscle. So you consume protein that then breaks down into amino acids and gets into your circulation. Only once those amino acids are in circulation can you then pull them into the working muscles. There are multiple ways you can do it, but here are some crucial tips to help you utilize more protein in your muscles. First things first, hopefully it should now be clear that the goal is not to consume protein endlessly and train randomly, hoping that the body will figure the rest out. It's to get amino acids into the blood and then push that blood rich in amino acids into the muscles, where protein can then synthesize, making you bigger and stronger. Muh, but not as big as strong as moi. Do you even lift strong? It's not about how much protein you consume in a day or how often you do so. It's more to do with the amount of amino acids you have freely available in your bloodstream when you train. So that pumping blood into those working muscles will also drive the amino acids in. If you were interested in both building muscle and losing fat, we would suggest the fat loss first, as this is a much quicker process. You've got three choices. One, protein alone can take a long time to break into amino acids, and some of it won't break. So if that's all you're taking, make sure you take your protein plenty of time before you work out, at least an hour before. So that some amino acids are available in your bloodstream before you start working your muscles. This is not the best way, but the good news is that you will experience more protein synthesis as more amino acids will find their way into the muscles. The best protein powder is whey protein powder because it's easy for the body to digest and break down into amino acids. But any complete protein source will do, whether it's coming from animal protein or even something like vegan protein powder. Two, 
A much better way would be to consume the same amount of protein, but with the addition of a proteolytic enzyme like bromelain or papain, which helps break down the protein into amino acids faster. You can get them as supplements or by eating pineapple or papaya, which are rich in those enzymes. The idea is to consume protein, say in a protein shape, while you have those enzymes, which will help you break the protein into amino acids faster. That way you have better conversion rate of protein into amino acids and have more amino acids available in your blood before you start pumping that blood into the working muscles. Three, you can just take an amino acid supplement directly, often in the form of an intra-workout shake during your workout. Unlike protein, which needs breaking down first, these amino acids can get straight into the bloodstream, making their bioavailability much higher. This means they are much more available for your muscles to pull and use, making them far superior for protein synthesis. Remember, the question is not how much protein do I need to build muscle, it's how do I get the amino acids into the bloodstream and then pull that amino-rich blood into the working muscles where protein synthesis can take place. Beyond that, we recommend that you don't go overboard with protein consumption. No need for protein shakes every three hours or eating five chicken breasts because an internet calculator told you you need 400 grams or so. It's likely not helping that much. Do however consume a little protein here and there as protein synthesis takes place for much longer after the workout, just not vast amounts. Even better, about an hour or so after dinner, do a little pump. Flex your muscles, pose. <laughs> you can also do isometrics, holding your muscles and the tension in challenging positions. Just get those muscles flexed. Do it for the muscles you worked on earlier. That way, you're getting another delivery of amino acids from your dinner to your muscles just before bedtime, allowing for better protein synthesis during the night. Okay, that's it. Hopefully this makes more sense now. If you're impressed, confused, have questions or comments, please do leave us a line in the comment section below and we'll do what we can to help. Our next video in this series is about muscle building. If you ever wondered whether there's more to muscle building than just lifting and eating protein, this next one is packed with insight and you won't want to miss it. If you've enjoyed this video, give us a like. And if you haven't already, click to subscribe to our channel and ring the little bell. And until next time, stay...